Everyone knows League of Legends, right? It's one of the most popular games of all time, with millions upon millions of players in a thriving competitive scene. And so you'd think that a game of this scale would be relatively, you know, well-polished and bug-free, right? Well, if only. Wasn't enough. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Uh, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> oh, man. The dab was just the best. Oh, my God. Perfect. <laughs> Nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, uh, it's just blank starting yeah, just, up the dragon. Just fine. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> we all know how ratchet League of Legends can be, with its almost never-ending stream of bugs, from minor cosmetic ones to kind of game-breaking ones. And when I mean like never-ending, I mean never-ending. Like there are literally entire subreddits dedicated to documenting and finding bugs. And a big thing is, is that some of these bugs never seem to be addressed. I mean, look at the Nico or Aurelian Souls champion subreddits, and you can see that these champions have been played by some long-running kit breaking bugs that never seem to be addressed. But by no means is Riot Games a small indie dev, despite how much we meme it as one. And so, the question is, why can't Riot address all of these bugs? How come there still exists all these bugs and client issues in League of Legends, and why haven't they all been fixed yet? Well, today I wanted to look at all the reasons why these bugs still exist in League of Legends from a software engineering perspective. And so, before we start, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. So I don't work at or nor have I ever worked at Riot Games in the past. So I can't say with any exact certainty what their like exact coding regimen and their coding development environment is like. And so I'm currently just speculating based off some generalizable software engineering principles as well as Riot's own developer blogs. And so these are all the reasons why I think that Riot Games has trouble fixing all their bugs in League of Legends. And so let's start with the most obvious reason why Riot Games has trouble fixing all their bugs, and that is that it's hard to constantly check for bugs and in integration. For one thing, their code base is massive. According to a Reddit post from September 2016, League of Legends has over 1 million lines of code in their entire code base. And this is before the 2017 client update. It's even before the 2021 client update and even before runes were overhauled. And for context, over 27 different champions have been added since. And so presumably, League of Legends at this point would have many more lines of code. But let's use that 1 million lines of code number for a thought experiment. How long would it take to check every line of code for bugs? Well, assuming a rate of 400 lines of code over one hour, it would presumably take 2,500 hours or 104 continuous days of labor to go through all the code. And so you might be wondering, where did I get this 400 lines of code per hour number from? Well, in looking through code, if you inspect at a rate of 400 lines of code, this is the optimal best defect density detection. And this is found according to studies by Oram and Wilson, and they show that reviewing code faster than 400 to 500 lines of code really allows for finding defects at a high density. They also cited that after about 60 to 90 minutes of looking through code, the, our ability to find defects drops dramatically. And as such, even obtaining this 2,500 hour goal is nearly impossible. But this thought experiment leads into a topic of fault localization, which is the process of trying to identify which lines of code are implicated in a bug. And this process can be extremely difficult for humans to do. In a study done by Zachary P. Fry and Wesley Weimer about fault localization, they found that on average, participants had an accuracy of about 46.3% in finding the line of code containing a bug when shown a Java file with a range of 20 consecutive lines visually marked off and each line containing either no error or exactly one error within that 20 line window. The study also found that some types of faults were more difficult, if not impossible to find in their study. And so of course this process was done in this scenario where the participants were not permitted to run the code or use any external debugging or search tools. And thus, it isn't really indicative of what testing and fault localization would look like in the real world. But it does show the effectiveness of ha only having a human look at the code. But what about having a human and computer working in tandem to debug? And so we can't also depend on an automated tool to catch all the errors and check the code. And so currently, League of Legends does have an automated testing system, which is the build verification system. According to Riot employee Jim Anodin Merrill, the system effectively runs approximately 100,000 test cases a day, as of 2016 when the article was made. 
He also discusses how bugs discovered in automation, they get resolved 8 times faster than the average bug. And so while this system has been effective in catching bugs for predetermined and pre-written tests, it still has many flaws that make it hard to test other bugs. For one, the system so far only really tests game logic. It doesn't really test a lot of the different facets of the League of Legends game, including visual effects, network issues, and etc. According to this response by Anodin, as of 2016, they didn't have an automated system in place that handled visual verification, as one of the challenges is making sure that rendering is fully deterministic and then determining how to do these diffs efficiently in such a way that the data we produce is useful. Of course, this most certainly could have changed in the current day, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did, especially since Anodin has said that they had some ideas to tackle this. But I currently don't have any research that points to this being true one way or another. And so these tests also aren't fully comprehensive either in terms of just game logic. These test suites serve as unit tests or integration tests, and it would be extremely difficult and fundamentally impossible to cover every interaction in League of Legends. I mean, it just isn't feasibly possible given League's complexity. And League is very complex. For example, in discussing the creation of Renata Glask's alt, the dev team noted the complexities that came in having to deal with the unique champion traits. Things like Teemo's poison or Vayne's silver bullets, or simply even just the item Runa's hurricane had to be explicitly dealt with in order to make Renata's alt functional. And so imagine the complexity that would arise from testing the interactions between every League of Legends champions, items, and etc. It would just be impossible. But beyond Riot's build verification system, it also is impossible to just have a different automated tool scan the entire League of Legends codebase to find and fix unknown bugs that pass the verification system. So not to go too deep into this topic, but effectively it is impossible to have an automated tool fix every bug. The basic proof behind this impossibility is based on the proof by reduction, and it links the idea that having a program find every bug would go against the halting problem. And this halting problem is a problem that asks whether or not an arbitrary program will stop or run forever. And Alan Turing proved that there is no algorithm that can determine this. So theoretically, an automatic bug fixer can't even determine whether or not there exists a program that causes a program to halt, and thus it can't find every possible bug in existence. This, however, doesn't mean that it's impossible to be aided by softwares to find bugs, as there exists softwares like Facebook's Get a Fix program that helps developers automatically fix some bugs. So we can't automatically fix and find every bug, and it's hard to check bugs by hand. But what if you didn't need to? What if the community could help point you to bugs and help show you how to re reproduce them? Like, what about making a bug report? Well, the thing is, people's bug reports can be kind of garbage. The key to fixing bugs is being able to reproduce them, and some reports do a fantastic job of creating a step-by-step -step guide at reproducing bugs, but some are just kind of awful. And these awful ones make it harder to exactly determine what is wrong with the game. Like look at this bug report on the patch 12.5 bug Megafred. Steps to reproduce? Don't know? Like that's helpful man. But it isn't really the fault of the players to not be able to determine these steps to reproduce. Depending on the bug, it can be extremely difficult to even improve these bug reports. Like the bug I showed before, how do you even describe how to reproduce it? Like in this case and in many cases, it is extremely difficult to determine what information you actually need to include in the bug report, since we don't know the underlying code, and we shouldn't be expected to know that code. Even with detailed reports, League is very hard to test and reproduce bugs. There exist so many factors and variables in the game that can make it hard to reproduce and replicate bugs. But League of Legends can also get replay files of the games, but even then, there are caveats to using these replay files to help fix bugs. In a post from 2018 by Tony Albrecht, they described the many issues with getting replays, and that replays expire with the patch that they were made on, so they need to use the exact patch version the replay was recorded with. Also, live builds don't contain all of the profiling code, but with version control, we can easily build what we need. Replay runs aren't exactly the same as the original run. There is significant time spent decrypting the replay file itself, and the HUD is different, but overall, a replay is similar enough that allows us to find gross performance degradations. It's worth noting that the game, unlike the game server, isn't deterministic, and this means that we have to account for slightly different results when rerunning the same replay. And Albrecht also notes that there are more issues about reproducing bugs. For example, some cases require specific circumstances, or only occur on certain hardware configurations. 
Robust profiling systems can help us isolate those issues, but issues will inevitably slip out of live builds. But let's say hypothetically, there are bugs that are widely known and very easy to reproduce, perhaps in a champion subreddit of sorts. Well, why haven't those bugs been fixed yet? And so it is incredibly hard to address and fix every and each bug that pops up. As a matter of fact, it's nearly impossible to address all of these bugs in a continuously iterated software. And we'll cover more on that later. And so the inherent nature of all these bugs are that, that some won't be as impactful or won't be as widespread as other bugs. As such, Riot presumably won't be as involved with some bugs than they are with others. So even if a bug impacts champions like Nico or Aurelian Soul, if the bugs aren't egregiously game-breaking enough or don't impact the most amount of people, then they likely won't be as addressed. This also applies to client clutter, which, while annoying, isn't the worst. Also, in assigning priority and severity, it is important to determine when something is a bug versus a feature. A bug or defect can be defined as any characteristic of a product which hinders the usability for its intended purpose. But what exactly does this mean? What exactly is a bug in relation to League's intended purpose? I think the answer to this case might be clear when looking at two different instances of animation cancelling. And that is, why is Riven's animation cancelling considered a feature, whereas Zed's animation cancelling was considered a bug? And so I think the answer to this question is that, in the case of League of Legends, is when it makes something not competitive and not balanced. And so what does this mean for the game? And so, in the case of animation cancelling, I think Riven's animation cancelling is something that made her as a champion more balanced and more competitive, whereas Zed's animation cancelling made him more uncompetitive and less balanced and that he was too strong for the current meta and for the game. But what does this mean for the other end of the spectrum? For example, Nico's particle effects on her clone make it so that her as a character isn't as balanced as other characters, but in the other way. She isn't as effective and isn't as strong because people can determine which clone is her and which one isn't. And so in this case, why is that not as addressed? And is it because it isn't game breaking for the most of my players and only for really one? The answer isn't exactly known. And so, at times, it can be difficult to determine what is a bug versus a feature, and it can also be difficult to determine when a bug makes something uncompetitive and unbalanced. Most importantly, besides all of these factors I listed before, is that League is also a constantly updating game. It's the billion dollar never ending game of sorts. According to Anodin, League changes really, really quickly. On average, they'll see over 100 code and content changes checked into the source code every day. And so let's go back to the idea that it's nearly impossible to address every bug in a continuously iterated software, which League definitely is. With League of Legends being continuously updated and continuously iterated, there comes this endless stream of bugs that arise from the endless amounts of content that League adds. And this is inherent to almost every continuously developed program, with programs like Mozilla Firefox demonstrating this trend. And thus, like we talked about before, it's frankly impossible to check and test every possible interaction between the new content and pre-existing content. And as such, bugs will naturally arise from new content being introduced. And this constantly evolving status of the game helps keep the game fresh and, well, fun. And I don't want to give up the constant updates and constant new features and mechanics, even if it means that League of Legends will continue to be as buggy as it is today, which is, well, very buggy. And so this is just one of the trade-offs that comes from having League of Legends be a constantly evolving, changing game, and in no world would I ever not make this trade-off. And so, in conclusion, without a doubt, there are so many complex factors involved in the development of League of Legends and software engineering as a whole. And we've only just scratched the surface of it in this video, as these remain only some of the reasons why League of Legends is so buggy. And so if you want to learn more about League of Legends and the tech behind it, Riot Games runs a fantastic tech blog at technology.riotgames.com, which is constantly being updated with more and more blog posts about how the Riot inner workings and inner development works. And so yeah, thank you guys all for watching and please like and subscribe if you want more.